Chapter 75 The Butler Did it. At his direction, the music fades somewhat as the band is all smiles, somewhat self-conscious smiles, but smiles nonetheless. Well done, gentlemen. Things are progressing wonderfully, Philip remarks, and the main singer, Koa Jackson, smiles down at him from his impressive stature. Last time he received a smile that large from a Hawaiian man, this broad-shouldered, he was being intimidated by a casino that wanted his winnings returned to them. Thank you, sir. However, I must ask why you had us perform a love song, Koa asks, before glancing to the left and letting out a slight sigh. Philip follows his gaze and sees a pair of Metak women in guard uniforms. Nika and Nita, I wonder which of their secret societies has taken an interest in this event. Who says it's just one, sir? I request that you please don't hurt them. They're too dull to actually be a threat, Koa asks. I've no intention to kill anyone tonight. Fret not, Philip says before glancing to the short blue-skinned twins. However, I do feel they're owed a congratulations. They are, after all, carrying possibly the first Hawaiian-descended Metak in the galaxy. Please, sir, Koa remarks and receives a smile. Oh, don't fret. My personal entertainment this evening is harmless. Excuse me, Philip remarks before setting off. A glance to the reflection of a wine glass in a Nagasha's hand has him easily see Admiral Cistern and Ambassador Tal clearly having an excellent time together. He had stayed out of the betting pools due to moral reasons, mostly because his actions would be severely impacting them and had no desire to deal with the drama of a cheating accusation. Perhaps if he were 10 or 15 years younger, he would have time for that kind of fun, but he really does need the few more minutes to ensure he's properly rested each day. Good evening, ladies, he says to the two tiny women who look at him in shock before stealing themselves so obviously that it's outright comedic. Wah! Nita half shrieks. Oh my goddess! Nika gasps out. Who are you? Wait, you're one of the Trets doing the strange thing with the ship. The Dauntless, and I am not a Tret young lady, I am human. He remarks expecting a protest and not at all disappointed in the scoff from Nika, even as she stops Nita from shouting her protest. You know, not very many people are paying too much attention. Mr. Jackson is soon to go on a bit of a break from his singing. If you two were to spend some time with him, I doubt you'd have a great deal of protests or argument, he says, and their eyes widen and he can see them weigh the mission against their affection for Mr. Jackson. And to his private delight, Mr. Jackson wins. In fact, the man wins so hard that neither of them notice him frisking both of them as he kneels down and points to behind the stage where Bass and Brass is soon to finish their next song. Both incompetent cultists rush off and Philip heads off to the buffet table to gather a few things for Ambassador Tao. No doubt the renewed dancing is working up a fierce appetite, but the contents of Admiral Cistern's plate will simply not do for her delicate constitution. A sampling of the table and a few drinks to pair with them and he starts carrying the tray, avoiding the crowds and taking his time as he's flattened out the paper he got off Miss Nicka and is reading it out of the corner of his eye. So there's currently a mess of three different groups working together. Nika and Nita are to work as distraction in about 10 minutes. However, he doubts they'll be anything but distracted themselves, which means that the plans to take over security will be well and truly stumped. However, there's no reason he has to rely on the competence, or lack thereof, of the aliens. Good evening again, sir and madam. Perhaps a few touches to restore the lady's strength. He offers Ambassador Tal as he arrives near the two. Thank you, Philip. Was that Mr. Jackson's, um, girlfriends I spotted? Admiral Cistern asks, clearly hesitating to use the term fuck buddies, a show of good sense from the military man. It was indeed, sir. There's a touch of mischief afoot, however, I'm on top of it. Do not worry, there will be nothing but a pleasant evening for everyone involved barring the ones who are attempting to ruin it, of course. Excellent, Philip. 
I do look forward to your report at the end of all this, Admiral Cistern remarks as he glances up at the tray that Philip is holding. Of course, sir, Philip remarks as he places everything down for Ambassador Tal and whisks away the paper into a pocket before he picks up the now depleted plate and mildly depleted bourbon. Have fun. Admiral Cistern bids him and Philip favors him with a slight smile. Excuse me, he says, and begins to walk out smartly. It's best to get rid of the dishes so some poor foolish soul doesn't get herself poisoned by the drink or remaining sauces. He quickly finds his way out of the hall, calling some of the intelligence division to take it from him. He's met by Jonas Oak. The young man is mostly a data analyst but is willing to do the legwork. A solid young man, he and the team he's part of have been having an almost criminal amount of entertainment pouring through the unending amount of petty conspiracies. Is there anything else you'd care to have me fetch, sir? Jonas asks, and Philip smiles. Get several men down to the office of the registrar. It is about to be raided. Philip orders, leaving things deliberately vague to see if the young man has the initiative and insight to come up with a plan. Hmm. Perhaps some men looking to taste things more exotic and finding a few friends in the guards. Jonas suggests, and Philip smiles and nods. An excellent plan, but best ensure that he knows the priorities. Probable deniability is the name of the game Mr. Oak. Just let them know the details of guards and the registrar office. I'll be able to cover the rest from here. Philip says, and receive a smart nod as he passes off the tray to Jonas, who takes it before turning on his heel and marching out. Jonas's plan is even more clever than it appears at first blush. The addictive qualities of pheromones on the women of the galaxy means that the men are effectively able to seduce and maintain the loyalty of an enormous number of women simultaneously. As predicted, the ambassadors and higher-ranked officials and managers are all wed in one way or another, rendering them effectively immune to such a thing. However, the guards, the secretaries, the assistants, valets, janitors, cooks, and effectively every middling to low-ranked individual in the organization are prime targets for seduction and subversion. He re-enters the dance room and calmly takes a veiled communicator from the pocket of a young lady with a very shifty presence. It has several illegal modifications designed to make it work like an extremely low-profile two-way radio. There are several messages upon it and the contents are very interesting. He pockets it fairly quickly and moves back towards the band. Mr. Jackson is on his break and entertaining the sisters Nika and Nita as he approaches. The new head singer is Mr. Dudley Wrench, a very appropriately named engineer who is also very musically inclined with a deep voice between baritone and bass. Just a word of warning, Mr. Wrench, and I advise you to explain this to your comrades. There's going to be some unpleasantness rather soon and you should all quickly utilize your cultural artifacts to deal with them. Look to the balcony. He informs the singer who nods between sips of water. Hey O'Malley, trouble soon. Keep prepped and pass it on. Song list is unchanged, Wrench says leaning back to the saxophonist standing near him. He throws a wink at Philip when he leans back as the news is delivered to the entire band in roughly three seconds, including to Koa, whose distraction of Nita and Nika is so thorough that it's not until he pulls away that the women seem to remember where they are. Then he gets right back to it. Philip sees the tiny scandal in progress and nods to himself. It's a mild bit of dirt to distract from the fact that there's a three-pronged intelligence operation in progress. Give the rumor mongers something to talk about and snicker at while you get to some real work done out of sight. He fetches some of the better-tasting treats and begins a quick bit of the rounds to offer them to various guests. He gets a few suspicious looks from several of the men, but all the women to the last seem to simply ignore him. So the pheromone effect is very much in play at this level as well. It's rather fascinating that so many advanced races are so easily controlled by their hormones. 
He manages to pocket a better dressed assassin's needle. No doubt it's poisoned with something. There's a cry of assassin as the woman tries to throw some blame at her target. It fails rather quickly, and a pair of guards escort her out in a dead and entirely feigned faint. Alcohol is quickly blamed and the party resumes. All in all, a rather pitiful attempt, but still the best he's seen all night as she had an exit strategy. The din dies down and he gives a pointed look to the band as he spots some wavers and disruptions on the horizon, making a beeline for the balcony. No doubt the next interruption. The winks he receives in return lets him know that everything is all well and fine. Then a ship appears and numerous armed women begin dropping down from the open door on the side of a troop transport that's in the process of fading into visibility. Weapons free! Fire at will! Admiral Cistern barks and the entire band reveals themselves as armed and dangerous with large drum-fed rifles made of black metal and red wood that fill the air with lead. Mobster style. The six women dropping from the ship have bullets slam into them and fall to the ground as a tiny disc is launched through the air and it soars into the open troop side of the ship. There's a slight pulse and it collapses to the ground, thankfully crushing no one. Philip, if you could be so kind as to call some troops here, we need to get this filth cleaned away and the party continued. What? How could you possibly think of continuing after this? Lady Tacanped demands in shock with her feathers sticking up and ruffled. Clearly this was her all or nothing attempt to derail things. These Cretans are nothing less than the enemy and seek to disrupt this event. As such, I will resist the closing of it to the best of my abilities. Now then, have the balcony doors closed and we will be able to continue as if nothing has happened. Admiral Cistern states, and after a quick glare to the guards, the doors are closed, even as Philip makes a few quick calls. Really, Admiral, this is far too much. We have been attacked numerous times. Surely this has gone on long enough. Madam, the ball has a mere 30 minutes remaining. I ask of yourself and all these good men and women merely half an hour to ensure that all the cruel and callous fools who would ruin our day are foiled. And the sheer amount of weapons that... I know they are cultural artifacts. Lady Tyconped begins before ceasing her would-be rant. Very well, I give up trying to speak sense into a dirt-dwelling ape, she declares with a huff, before turning around and marching out of the room. Out of my way, she hisses at the guards and storms through. Very well, then, does anyone else wish to indulge the dead Cretans outside, or shall we continue? Admiral Cistern asks, taking control of the room. Very well then, gentlemen, music. And just like that, the ball resumes.